This is Chris Pierce, and you are listening to the Self-Maintenance of the Brain and Body Podcast. Every week, I'll share with you a simple and easy-to-implement self-care idea and challenge you to create a positive change in your life. This is episode nine, and I'm going to talk about how a safe brain means improved mental and physical wellness and improved human performance. First, what am I talking about when I say a safe brain? A brain feels safe when it is not experiencing such emotions as anger, fear, worry, guilt, disgust, or feelings of pain. You see, when you regulate the amount of time spent experiencing these types of emotions, it results in an improved performance and improved mental and physical well-being. To understand the science behind this, let's look at what's called the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system regulates involuntary processes within the body, such as your heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, digestion, and sexual arousal. The autonomic nervous system consists of three parts. First, the sympathetic nervous system, which is also known as your fight, flight, or freeze. Second is the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest, or sometimes called your feed and breed, as it also manages sexual functions and arousals. And the third part is the enteric system, which manages the digestive functioning. Whenever you experience negative emotions, the brain feels less safe, and this activates the sympathetic nervous system. This action activates within the brain the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, which results in the release of stress hormones throughout your body. These stress hormones cause your eyes to dilate, your breathing becomes shallow, your heart rate increases, and your digestion slows down and your muscles tense. Once the brain feels safe again, the sympathetic nervous system will deactivate, activating the parasympathetic nervous system, causing the release of a hormone called acetylcholine, which helps slow your heart rate and helps calm your body down. Through emotional regulation, you can choose to help your brain feel safe and decrease the amount of time spent in the sympathetic state. Doing this will improve your cognitive ability, help you deal with stress, anxiety, and depression, and protect your body from other mental and physical illnesses and injuries. A 2020 study published in the Journal of Medical Virology explains how the increased levels of stress due to the recent COVID-19 epidemic and the negative effects of the chronic activation of the sympathetic nervous system contributed to a 29.9% increase in the development of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and mental illnesses. Research links chronic stress to the development of these conditions. A safe brain also treats chronic pain. Researchers in a 2017 article published in the journal Pain explained that the higher level of a negative emotions experienced, the more intense levels of pain experienced. So in my book, Self-Health Andragogy, you can read about an experience I share where I experienced more pain jumping from a plane during an airborne training exercise than I would experience when I would jump from a plane during a weekend fun jump. It's because the higher levels of stress experienced, the higher levels of pain I felt. When a brain feels safe, the neural circuitry influencing pain is less active. So a safe brain means a healthy, happier life. There is a holistic benefit of striving to maintain a safe brain. You can maintain a safe brain through regulating your autonomic nervous system, striving for more parasympathetic activity than sympathetic activity. So I challenge you this week to proactively look for situations that cause negative emotions. Once you identify these events, restructure your thoughts and help your brain feel safe and happy. Apply meditation and diaphragmatic breathing so your body activates a parasympathetic nervous system, restoring a safe brain. This concludes this episode. Please tune every Monday for a new self-care tip. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and share it with your family and friends. You can also learn more about this topic on my website at utah23.org. Also, please check out my self-care book titled Self-Health Andragogy, Self-Directed Learning Approach to Mental and Physical Self-Care. It's available on Kindle, print copy, and audiobook. You can find links to my website and to my new book in the show notes of this podcast.